Hello. Hello. Welcome to Two Tunes Podcast. My yeah. name is Brandon, and I have a gift for Bo. I'm Bo. And for me. So, uh, on January 4th, Vertical House Records. Do you but, know Vertical well, House well, Records? Well, hold on. Before, before we... Can I borrow your knife again? Oh, my God. Bo has a knife, by the way. <laughs> Bo has a knife! <laughs> yeah. Do you um, know that? Do you know that video? This is... It's the 28th, by the way. Crap, where did I... I lost it. Oh, this is not a good thing. Do you know that video where it's like they're like at a pool party or whatever, like outside, and like this like little kid comes running around the pool, and the mom's like, "What do you have?" And he's like, "A knife." And she's like, "No." <laughs> so no. I have this funny idea uh, that my friend Mike and I will do at some point uh, at marching band rehearsal. Is we'll it'll be Trisha, our color guard instructor, and she'll be like, "What do you have?" And then it turns to me and Mike, and we have sabers, yeah. like guard sabers. And we'll be like, "A knife." <laughs> She'd be like, no, and then it's just us running away. <laughs> gotcha. This has been Brandon Describes TikToks that don't <laughs> exist yet. <laughs> but it could be. You just got to do it. Yeah, we've been talking about it for months. All right, so on January 4th, Vertical House Records. Do you know Vertical House Records? I do not. Uh, it's my favorite record store in Huntsville, Alabama. Okay, okay. Rec- it's a record <laughs> it's store. It's a record store, yeah, not okay. a record label. They posted on their Facebook and Instagram, both of which I follow, um, like Green, about... Green Day Records. Yeah, here, take that. About that, uh, here, I'll just read the exact post because I screenshotted it. Uh, they said Huntsville's The Autobots, like T H E E Autobots, existed from July 95 until November 96. Wait, is this a baseball team? No, it's a band. Okay, The Autobots. The Autobots from Huntsville. Again, yeah. existed for a little over a year. A little over a year. They put out a few seven inches, and you can check out the discography on their band camp. Uh, but their singer, Jack, uh, brought in a small stack of the last remaining copies of their second seven inch, and then they had them for sale. And so I bought a each a copy of the Autobots. Of the Autobots, yeah. yeah. So it looks like you threw in some other stuff here. Well, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Some stickers. Wait, is there more records? So you threw in, yeah, there's like an extra record in here. Nice. It's that's mine, cool. right? Because it was my gift. Oh, it's the it's the guys. It's I think it's the singers. Maybe. I think it's his other thing. Hang on. So. The guys. Wait a second. Wait a second. Is this the band that dresses up as Autobots? I don't think so. Okay. There are. It was. No, I don't think so. It's the Autobot. T H E E. You got to like search that. They have a website. I got to look up this guy now. So he tagged his. Um, he tagged his Instagram handle as Recursive Delete, and then when I look at this other record, um, Recursive Delete is the record label. So you didn't get it on red tape? No, that's sold out. They only made 25. <laughs> yeah. That's their whole uh mm-hmm. Oh, recursive delete audio visual cassette multi-track repair. Owned and operated this is, by Jack this is Saturn. A, this that's is a new guy. episode of Brandon reads the internet. That's fine. That's fine. Everybody likes it. So yeah, so I got us each a copy and apparently I got us a copy of this other thing too. Where are they from? Uh so they were originally from Huntsville, Alabama, which okay. is where Vertical House Records is. They have is. a song called Pittsburgh PA. Uh, one of them is from Pennsylvania. Is it from Pittsburgh? And then eventually they like moved to Oregon. Okay. Uh, we remain closed. Do you continue? What did he say? <laughs> this is where we mumble. Sorry. I thought he told me about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said, okay. So I, I messaged the guy at Vertical House Records. I was like, hey, I'm interested in getting two copies of this, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yep, got it. I figured it out, paid him and everything. And he was like, oh, hey, he gave me free seven inches to send out with those of another band he did in Portland called The Online Romance. So we are also getting a seven inch of The Online Romance. Nice. So, Bo, here you go. I get two seven inches? Yeah. Wow. The Online ro- Romance. Would you hey, like a Vertical House record hey, sticker also? Yeah. Is this... Is this, co- this <laughs> that's hilarious. It's colored. Yeah. Like... Okay, so it's it's the Autobots um, logo from the cartoon yeah. printed on a very, 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 very pixelated Because it's printer. from 1995 or whatever, dude. Yeah, yeah. and then it's colored Hand in. Hand colored in, yeah. Let me see yours. Just because I want to... So it's not, like, oh. perfect. Yeah. Oh, yours looks better than mine. That's okay. Well, I paid for it, so... <laughs> yeah, man, this so is... It's 33 and a third recording by the way yeah it says that it says that four, four tracks yeah. baggage claim Jerk area season records birth <laughs> defect 
This one record teacup. And this record is three wheels. ducats post page from Jerk Season Records. That's post so funny. Ducats. Four million years ago, they came from Alabama, a state composed entirely of humorless twits, a state torn by an old uh, age old war between those heroic Autobots, rulers of the metal scene, and the evil Decepticons, punk rockers. <laughs> Who don't know how to break dance. These incredibly powerful living robots capable of rocking your butt off, making you whistle, and dance along to their powerful rhythms continue their battle for supremacy here on Earth. They are the Autobots. That's amazing. And it's Irma, Solomon, Jack, and Doug. That's the band. Yeah. That's that's cool. So I'm excited to listen to this. And then the online romance. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's black vinyl. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and then the online romance probably which is and probably because why would you do any other color also spins at 45 does it i would assume oh yeah that's actually weird that it spins it i didn't think about that yeah yeah so there's your present bow Ooh, that's cool i like the the uh the label we'll have to take pictures of vocal with accompaniment post that looks cool we'll the, post in the discord and then maybe on the instagram as well but people need to remind me because I'll forget. Cause totally. That's how my brain works. Produced by Jack Saturn. Written by Jack Saturn. Hey, Abraham. This is very cool. Yeah. This is a uh, uh, audio podcast where we look at things. <laughs> by the way, if you're ever in Huntsville, Alabama, check out Vertical House. A great, great record store. Great selection. Will I be in Huntsville, Alabama? You should. I'm going again this summer. I'm going to California. Going to make it a yearly trek. California. What was that theme song of? Uh, the OC. The OC. There you go. By the band Phantom Planet. Yeah. Who? What was the? That actor was the drummer. The, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Like he's in a bunch of um. Jason. Sh- Jason Schwartzman. Schwartzman. Yeah. Not David Schwimmer. No. Different guy. Okay. Yeah. Great record store. Check him out. Vertical House. Oh look. They do online stuff. Sometimes. Oh, that's cool. So there's the dot is in the middle as if it's yeah, a record. Yeah, like it's a record, but then the star then for Huntsville. Yeah, yeah, the Vertical House Records. It's <laughs> at this cool place called the Low Mill Arts Community or whatever. Uh, it's this old mill that they've turned into like different shops and different things for artists. And then they've got the, the store there on the end, and it's it's awesome. So... I think I picked up. I don't. I don't know if I listened to it uh, when I was there last summer. I picked up like a random seven inch from like the counter, just because it was like this is a local band's five bucks, and I was like, "Yep, buying it." This is very cool. But I don't think I listened yet. Um, I was going to go see a show, and then it sold out. <laughs> and even when it was announced, they're like, "This will sell out." Which show? <clears throat> um, it was the the church. Oh, girls, the church girls. Church girls opening, and then on April first. Yeah. And it did sell out. Mm. And then I'm like, wait, what? It sold out? And I was like, we told you. Stupid human. Remember when I said I was double booked that day? Are you double booked? I'm actually there? triple booked that day. Because I <laughs> forgot something else was also that day. <clears throat> okay. So, well, at least you didn't quadruple book it. That's true. I would not have been able to do that. Yeah. So did we're here. Fall Out Boy tickets? I'm not going to go see Fall Out Boy. I want to see Fall Out Boy. I like you know Fall what's Out funny? Boy, but like... I could have seen Fall Out Boy my, my for under is. 10 bucks or maybe under 20 definitely yeah. at a place called The Hangout in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. In what year? Uh, <laughs> 2002. Sure. Um, maybe 2001. Um, and it's it's a it's a it was a theater uh-huh. that had two screens. Oh. And one side like a church bought the property and then turned it into a venue. And the one You'd walk down like you were walking down, and then there was a stage. Yeah. And I played there many times. It's a great local place. Yeah. Uh, and a bunch of bands in the scene in the early 2000s, mm-hmm. before they all blew up, played mm-hmm. there. Nice. So Thursday, played there, I think. Yeah. Probably with Punchline. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, so we're here to talk about two tunes. Yeah, eventually. And and your tune, my first is yes, you Speaking are is is a scene. long time coming because yeah. I think when we started this, you're like, oh yeah, we're going to talk about that, <laughs> and two years later, here it is. Yeah, and I've been like, but it's your song because yeah. we both love this band. Yeah, I mean, you probably love this band more than I do because yeah. I didn't even know this album existed. Oh, I, I mean, oh, I kind of stopped that. listening after, uh, not the first album, but, but the, the second, second album. album. Yeah, and then I'm just like. 
I, and not that I was like, oh, I'm over it. It's just like, I thought they broke up. Yeah. So we're talking about Motion City soundtrack. <laughs> yep. Just so people know. But uh, yeah, I kind of dropped off with them as well. Again, not for really any specific reason, just, you know, taste change or you move on or like, I, I just mostly was, was stuck on the one record, I guess. The the first one. The first one. Yeah. Um, that was a great record. Which is a great the record. Title? Where's the title? And the song that you're playing off of that one, or you wanted me to queue up at least, is like the song that I would pick. Yeah. Or at least one of the well, two. Well, that's the thing. Like, this is a hard, like a, if, if I, all right, so Commit This to Memory is the album, 2005. Oh, oh I'm an idiot then. I uh, Like the first one in 2003 is the one. Oh, that I, like, really yeah. No, to me, it's Commit This to Memory. That's the first one. Not, I, I mean, I listened to I in the movie. Yeah. Um, I but in the like, movie is the one that I listened to first. Yeah. But Commit This to Memory that's and that's the one that like they blew up on and everything else yes um but like everything is all right which we're gonna play like a little bit of when you're around i love that song uh make out kids lgfuad like just banger after banger on this album um they sing a lot about like mental health stuff uh the lead singer justin courtney pierre uh or is it justin pierre courtney you were right the first time justin courtney in the middle courtney pierre um which is his like professional name because he has like side stuff now too yes he does like under his own name like solo stuff is what i'm gonna say yes um but yeah they're they're kind of an interesting band so they started in minneapolis 97 uh they are considered an emo band i went on Mm -hmm. is this band emo yeah yeah, yeah. and typed it in just to make sure yeah they're an emo um but got an interesting sound because they use synthesizers and stuff um but yeah lyrically like a lot of stuff about like mental health things and using like before it was like a thing that people talked about especially i would say yes definitely or at least so openly and, and whatever um i actually one of the years that i saw them on warp tour because i'm pretty sure i saw them a couple times probably when i met <clears throat> one of them um and and stood on stage nice but it was in scranton it was at the they played like the second stage yes i think it was like technically the second yeah, stage yeah. but it was in like the was, amphitheater yeah, yeah yeah and they split the stage in half and whatever um but they played they were playing and they just like i can't remember if they stopped in the middle of a song or if it was just like after the one song was over it was like early in their set um the lead singer is like hey guys um i'm having a panic attack right now so can you just like give us a minute like and everybody's like yeah man like it's cool like we you know we got you like take your time whatever um and he just like kind of talked through it a little bit and then he felt okay enough and they went on and played the rest of the set and i was like that has always stuck with me i'm like damn yeah this is the that's second amazing. time i've heard this story from you sure but like it just <laughs> it just like really i was like that's that's really amazing and like like that he was able to realize that and like work through it and like still go on and stuff was was kind of amazing because like he could have he could have just left, I guess, and then I don't know what they do. He could have like fought through it and done the set and maybe like made himself worse. Like I don't, I don't know how that stuff works, but um, it's kind of it was, it was incredible. So yeah, but I want you to play "Everything Is All Right" at least a little bit of it because it's like if if I'm gonna play a song by them, it should be that song. But that's not the song I picked. Yeah. So let's hear. I love that. the drums at the beginning. Yeah, that's why you I'm just like playing, I'm playing them. them. Hold on a second. Let's actually run it through sound. <laughs> no, it was playing, and and I guess I thought it was doing something else. Right away, you get the synthesizer, the Moog. Yeah, there you go, dude. Turn it up. Crank that, soldier boy. I just, yeah. that people should listen to that album that that is my but my, like that's the song that's the album yeah like, that's my favorite um one of my favorite songs by them yeah and like and it's that drum part at the middle at the beginning yeah. like i love that it's so it's so unique and it's a hook yeah and then as i said like 
I don't know what happened first, but I definitely like was in the same kind of span of a week. We were working. Uh-huh. Um, we were working Warp Tour. And I know that I was like, I need to see this band. And I like, you kind of could go wherever you wanted. Mm-hmm. I could. So I was like on stage. Some 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 people like they'd be like no no you can't come up here yeah. this is Guar you can't come up <laughs> here. Um, I did not go try to see Guar. I mean I walked past. It was weird. Yeah. Um, Guar and the Warp Tour man. That's yeah. That was like one of the last Warp Tours that I went. Actually, it was the last Warp Tour that I went to, which was in like Baltimore. I just can't imagine being in that get up. Any of those get ups <laughs> in the middle of the summer. Outside. Yeah yeah Jeez. yeah. Um, but I was on stage and then like seeing him the drummer play yeah i don't know who the drummer is but tony thaxton i think sure i just was like reading their bio so like names are yeah in my head and then um i met um this girl who was working as well and uh-huh. then she she was like friends with everybody mm-hmm. like with thrice and thursday and motion city, San- motion city soundtrack so she was like talking to the drummer at one point i'm like hey how you doing nice. and then i was like downplaying myself so i'm in this band <laughs> this is like we're not good but he, he probably was just like, okay, whatever. Yeah. I don't care. How'd you get back here? Security? No, no, no. This is like, <laughs> b- this is by their merch. Oh, tent. okay. They were just there. He was still and... like, how'd you get over here? Security? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't have, they don't have security. <laughs> Not a lot. Uh, and only on the stages. Yeah. And, um, I, it was not the same year. Or maybe it was, I don't know that my chem was playing. Mm. It was not the same year. Um, that was earlier but like he had it set it felt like he had security okay like he had people walking around gerard way yeah gerard Gerard way was having was that when they had blown up already it it was when um so it was before i think it was before um black parade oh yeah because i think he was wearing a bulletproof vest yeah he he still had black hair it was the it was the three uh, cheers three cheers were sweet revenge yeah but they had they had already gotten big. I remember there was that one yeah. summer that like they were on Warp Tour, but like had they broken six months earlier, they probably wouldn't have been. Yeah, like yeah. they had grown up, like they had come up doing Warp Tour already, but like they were they were had already blown up, and then it was like, well, we already committed this thing, I guess we're going to do it, kind of thing. I don't I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to like speak to like whatever they were thinking, but I, it's just one of those things like you think they maybe wouldn't have been on it. Yeah, that's also like I remember seeing Fall Out Boy this summer that they blew up. But it was like happening as the tour was going on, kind of thing. So it was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so Motion City soundtrack, um, just a band I've liked for a long time. But like I said, I just kind of dropped off after that second album. Okay, uh, commit this to memory for yeah. for just whatever reason. Like I knew they had other stuff out, and I would like uh-huh. dip in here and there. Um, and then they broke up in 2016. I saw them on their farewell tour. Um, they are now back, as a lot of bands have done. So I think th- I think the band just realized. I mean, at that point, they had been around for like 20 years. And I think you just start to realize, like, as you get older and whatever, like, we don't have to just tour as a band. We can do other stuff. Like, we can have lives, and then we can get together well, periodically wasn't, and, like, um, run out and do stuff. I mean, I don't know the whole story, but I'm, my, my assumption is that Justin was like, I can't go on tour anymore. I think like, that like was part, part of it. Part, part of, of the reason that they don't do, or that they broke up. Yeah. Because they're, they're still... Well, they're back now. They, they did yeah. they did officially break up in 2016. And then in 2019, yeah, kind of came back. Um, but I think the one of the reasons is that you know he's like his mental health was. Yeah, I could be wrong. Well, I'm and probably. also just like saying, like like a lot of these bands, I think you're in your like 30s and stuff, and you're still trying to like be a professional touring band all the time, and it's like that's just not necessarily viable unless you're huge. So, uh, but anyway, uh, a couple years ago. I was down in Lancaster at Angry Young and Poor. Do you know that? No, I don't. Uh, so they're, let's see how they describe themselves. Um, they sell clothing and stuff, but I only go there for like records. They have a really good selection of, of vinyl in the like punk and metal and that kind of scene. Um, but I was just like digging through stuff, digging through the vinyl and like looking for things, and they didn't really like have anything that i that i knew and I, that i wanted or they had stuff that i knew but i don't know it just was like not finding anything and then i get to the m's and i'm like oh motion city soundtrack and i was like what is this album panic stations i was like i don't know this i was like i'm gonna get it though because i like them and it's from 2015 and i listened to it and i was like damn this is a good album 
So I only discovered it a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Um, like you said, you're like, I didn't even know about this album. And I was like, I didn't either. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really like it a lot. And um, I don't think it's replaced Commit This to Memory for me. I don't know that anything ever will. No. Uh, but it's it's a more adult album, I guess. And so like... Yeah. I think it hits me more in that in those ways. Gotcha. So that makes sense. Uh, yeah, but anyway, this is the final track. This is Days Will Run Away. <laughs> I didn't know it was the last track, uh-huh. but now that you said it's it, a last like, track. It, it totally is. Yeah. yeah. I had a bad feeling again. Everyone's underground. And they still like have maintained their sound and their writing and stuff, but like you can tell it's matured a lot. Yeah. Like this is ten years after Commit This to Memory. Like as I listen to this, I uh-huh. I am thinking of other bands that like who who could do this song uh-huh. and it still feels like the song right. Uh-huh. Like this doesn't remind me of like it doesn't that, scream like Motion City soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, but it's like I think Pearl Jam could do this. Hmm. Like it it would feel differently because it's yeah. like it, completely different vocals. Yeah. Or just Eddie Vedder, <laughs> right? Yeah. Just imagine a baritone singing this. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like I said. That's why I wanted you to play. Everything is all right because like this, this is, is a, not an accurate yeah. representation of their overall sound. 100%. It is just a song that I really really love. By yeah, I, I think um, uh, everything is all right. Is is more of just like this is that's the quintessential. Is, yeah. yeah, this is how they sound. And there's other like even like the opening track off of Panic Stations is. I mean, the whole album, it sounds like a Motion City soundtrack yeah. album, but, like, the opening track is probably, like, a better representation, um, and it's reminiscent of that and stuff, too. But it's also kind of cool, like like I said, with this song, I like how it's, like, a more mature take, and yeah. what I, you know... I also, just last night, listened to My Dinosaur Life yeah. for the first time. I love it. It's great. All their stuff's good. I like that it's that like it. Th- this is now telling a story. Like now, or like just like with the music itself, that like we started quiet and close, yeah. And then the drums come in, and it's like super powerful. I love his voice too. Oh yeah, it's so unique. Yeah, it's got a unique look too. <laughs> oh yeah, his hair's awesome. Big hair. Have you listened to any of his solo stuff? Some of it. Yeah, it hasn't grabbed me in the same way. Like, I, like I'm like, yeah, like this is nice, but like it hasn't. Um, maybe I haven't listened to enough. So, of it. is is it his wife that's on TikTok? Oh, I don't know. Because I know somebody in this band, their wife is like on TikTok okay. and is like, so like I was at this show that I paid for, and they're like, oh, I really love Motion City soundtrack. And I'm like. My husband's in that band. <laughs> Why funny. did I not get tickets for free? I had to pay for this. It's like I could hook you up. Yeah. And then she also has like a uh, there was like photos of her and him, but when they were like 2002. Oh, I have seen that. Maybe you sent me that. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I 
I think when I listened to that initially, that break seemed too long and the change came too abruptly. Okay. But because I was talking over top yeah. of it, it wasn't as... I mean, it really seems like it's ending. Yeah. It really seems like that's the ending ending. And if you're not paying attention to, like, the stat or the how far it is. And the you're like, oh, yeah, I'm done. And especially since this is the end of the album. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Is the is the synthesizer in in this as just barely? I think not in that this last, song, but oh. like oh the yeah whole yeah album. Okay. yeah. But like I said, it really sounds like a. Let me play the like a little bit of the opening track. Just see. through your microphone, yeah. Because but it's just become like it's become a favorite album of mine, like a go to. Nice. Like I said, I've only listened to it like for a couple of years now. It's a more punky song. Yeah. But it definitely has their sound. Imagine if this is how we uh, did the podcast where we just held up our phones. Through micro- <laughs> yeah. Uh, have I told, I think, I don't know if I've talked about that. I've talked about the Weekly Planet before. It's my favorite podcast. A couple hundred times. But the, so they have different theme songs okay. for different parts. of. So they have like a main theme song. Well, then it's, it's just, it's just like a, I know what you're talking about. So they have a main theme song, right? Yeah. Which they just recently changed. Okay. So there's a line. The 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 line the song goes something like uh, "Red Hot Comic Book Movie News Shooting Up Your Butthole," <laughs> and like they've been going for like ten years. And James, like the the main guy, he's like, I hate. He's like, it's just so immature. Like like it's great. It's a great song, whatever. So he's like, I'm gonna change it. And he kept saying like all last year. He's like, I'm changing it next year. I'm changing it next year. So they have this running gag about the old cartoon Defenders of the Earth, and every okay. time they mentioned it, they like play part of the theme song. So now their main theme song is like "Red Hot Comic Book Movie News" instead of the shooting up your butthole part would be like defenders of the earth defenders and then it cuts back but Nothing. anyway for some of their segments in their show they also have theme songs yeah and one of them is letters and it's so they play the letters theme and it's like when people write in but the one guy plays it through his phone okay every time he has a youtube link <laughs> he plays it through his phone <laughs> sometimes he forgets to turn the volume off like it's, okay. it's really fun but it's like a thing now like you can't he can never just they're not going to put it on the border they're I not going to yeah, put yeah. it on the thing so yeah, i got you anyway that's cute they have multiple theme songs and we have none are you cool. salty about that no what if i just started popping this bubble wrap on here Please stop. <laughs> I'm usually the one who's just like, let me do it annoyingly. I feel manic today. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's most of the city soundtrack. Yeah. Go listen to them. So I mean, everybody, if they look at the if they looked at the title of the episode, they know who the second artist is, and they're like, really? But well, maybe, maybe they're not like really. They're not like really. They're like, wait, Brandon just talked about Little Yachty and this new album last week. Yeah. That's why Bo's listening to it partially so it, it was it, <laughs> totally it, we did talk about it yeah um but I talked about it. the so i saw it on i just didn't know which artist it was like i'm like i saw the name on the like new music in alternative uh-huh. and i'm like isn't that a rapper and i didn't listen to it at that point and then we talked about it and uh-huh. i didn't listen at that point and then i brought it up in one of my classes and i'm like hey guys have you have you listened to the new Lil Yachty? And then one person is like, I don't listen to rap. I'm like, it's not rap. <laughs> it's not. Um, I don't think that the first album or the first track, which I'm going to play, uh-huh. the Black Seminole, um, is a representation of the whole. But I think that this song, the Black Seminole, is Pink Floyd. Okay. Like the whole thing uh-huh. is just like, it's a Pink Floyd song. It's just like, you're just taking all the best parts of Pink Floyd and then like, putting them in there and I'm, i was listening to it today before i came here and i'm like they should have just gotten uh gilmore to, to play on it and this is like can you just do a solo over top of this part like yeah. because that's what we're imitating we're imitating you so like why don't you just do it yeah. and then it can be like featuring what's his first name i keep david david gilmore, david gilmore. Yeah. um rory it's rory gilmore lorelei what those are Gilmore girls. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Blanche. Those are golden Those are girls. Golden girls. <laughs> so, uh, this is a really long song. Yeah. And it and it's it good. 
it's good it's, it's a really good song, song. yeah because i told um, you it was good <laughs> anyways here's the black seminal by lil yachty lil yachty so whenever we talked about this yeah i had listened to like a couple tracks so like i listened to this one like maybe yeah. the next one or two and then i went and listened to like just the whole thing and it's it's so good the whole thing yeah i listened to most of it um i think it's like an it's over an hour it's long yeah. it's it's got a lot of tracks which i'm and like some of them are like five and six minutes long and this one is some of them are like a minute and a half this is almost seven minutes yeah so it's like oh it's long it's pink floyd right there <laughs> like just pick like it, but then you're like oh and then there's so have you gone and listened to other little yachty stuff no I mean, maybe one. Maybe one. I did. I did go because I was maybe like one track. I knew the name. Like I've known oh, yeah. the name. Oh, yeah. it kind of, it's kind of specific and whatever. I mean, it's little something. Like there's several of those there's, folks. There's but, several. There's like hundreds of those. Yeah. But I was like, I was like, I know I've heard him before because also his voice is kind of distinctive and whatever. Yeah. And what I've mostly heard him on is like other people's tracks. Yeah. yeah. And then I went and listened to like a couple tracks of his own and stuff as well. Um, and so like, yes, he's a rapper, and his stuff sounds like rap, typically, but. He's also like, are you familiar with Juice World? Yeah. So like, it's this like emo rap yeah, kind yeah. of thing. So it's like they've already been kind of departing. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. A little bit. One hundred percent. They've been getting on the little yachty and going boop boop, and we're in this little ship joke about departing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, because uh, <laughs> it's, it's a yacht. Because it's a yacht. Uh, <laughs> but but it's like, so this isn't a total like left turn to me. No. This not is at all. like an evolution. Yeah. But his stuff up until this point just did not sound exactly like this. So yeah, lyrically yeah. it's probably very similar. Sure. Yeah. Musically it's really different. Yeah. So like, and and it's like people are like, oh, it's a psychedelic rock, and it's like, well, this is. Yeah. But it's and, got like R and B. Yeah. Like, yeah. To me, it's like an R and B slash. Yeah. Alternative record kind of thing. Yeah, because like sense. these sounds to me they remind me of Pink Floyd. Yeah. But like, to somebody else, it might be like, "Oh, this is like 1960s, 1970s R&B." Yeah. So, but it's just like it, it just has all of the the tones. Yeah. And that's all the lyrics, and we got four minutes left. <laughs> Which uh, is basically now we're like in the great gig in the sky. Or well, we're approaching the great gig in the sky. No. Dead zones? Yeah. To so this zone. is like like when the uh, So if you are you familiar with no. the Great Gig in the Sky? Nope. So Dark Side of the Moon, yep. it's like the last track on the first side and it's like the vocal thing that just okay. goes oh, Okay. What's happening in the Wizard of Oz at this point? At this point, they're in the the, tor- the tornado is happening, and it's like setting her down into. Oh, okay. I thought it'd be later in the movie. No, I mean albums were like thirty minutes, so. And then, like, if you're thinking of that, this is like when it has crashed down into. Um. Into, Oz. If you think of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I've watched that, by the way, like, uh, so many times. Dark Side of Oz. Yeah. But, like, the bass sound is there, the drum sound is there, the guitar sound is there, the synthesizers are there. Like, it's just like, what what did Pink Floyd do? Yeah, no, I get it. I was trying to pull up uh, Questlove's yeah reaction to this because he's the because of him is why i listened to it oh okay because he posted about because i'd seen the album cover when it came out that week yeah because it's kind of specific it's like oh he's yeah like it's ai ai generated melty faces yeah um but Questlove posted about it and he was like he's like i i really 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 love this record <laughs> and i love when artists pull off a good departure record yes and then he like talks about some of it and stuff but Because at this point, you don't know you're listening to Lil Yachty. No. Anymore. Yeah. You're just like, what is this? This could be like, um, um, crap, what's that band? Um, the Mars Volta. Oh, okay. Like, this could be the Mars Volta. Yeah. And you're just like, okay. I'm 
betting those are sampled. What? Snares. Oh. Like they're two the same. But all this, this is this is reminding me of Greg and Scott. Uh-huh. You gotta listen to Dark Side of the Moon. If you and and like really focus on it. Yeah. It's such a great album. Have you seen all the ridiculous Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's 50 years of Because album, people don't understand. And they released a thing and it had like rainbows it on did, it. It did. Because. Like, what? You getting woke, stay Because people are dumb and don't understand. Oh, wait, there is a rainbow on the cover of that album. And there has been since day one. And people have it tattooed on their back. Because guess what? That's part of the, the, the album art. Yeah. Is white light being going into color spectrum, also known as a rainbow. So this is. This is great, like, right here. This <laughs> okay. is great gig in the sky. track man it's a good album oh that's a different thing yeah it is <laughs> yeah yeah cool. I, I so have you listened to the whole album uh probably most of it i don't okay. think i mean as i said it's 14 tracks 57 minutes i don't know if i got all the way through it um but definitely like the we saw the sun where like the ending part is just a bob bob ross <laughs> yeah clip yeah. and then like they they mess with it yeah and it's just like that could just be like i just want to do that like yeah. that's cool that's yeah so definitely got halfway through it yeah it's cool though i recommend folks check it out and mcs <laughs> i'm wondering if like the tracks because sometimes they're capitalized and lowercase and yeah he if, uses... if there's some like if it's just like it's random it doesn't mean anything some of or it, it i, I tried to figure something. out a little bit i haven't like super done it but like yeah some some letters are capitalized, some are not. And yeah. I don't um, know that it spells anything. A thing just popped out in the Wikipedia article of like, while opinions will certainly be divided on <laughs> let's start here, it's undeniable that a rapper hasn't committed to so so impressively and effortlessly to a rock genre since Kid Cudi's Nirvana inspired Speeding Bullets to Heaven, which just basically means I want to go listen to that now. Nice. Kid Cudi. I'm coming for you next. <laughs> I like the bit of Kid Cudi that I listened to. Yeah. Anyways, uh, go listen to things that you don't think you'd like. Yeah. Because you might like it. Actually, just listen to everything. If you're just like, ooh, people are talking about this. Yeah. Like, na- nowadays, it costs you nothing. Yeah. 20 years ago, it cost you $15. Yeah. So, like, Yeah. And then you have a thing, and you're like, that that was a waste. Yeah. Where now it's just like, it costs you time, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. And then you can you can skip through and be like, I like that. That's cool. Surprise yourself. Listen to things that you don't think that you would like. And be like, what are all the people talking about? What genre do I, quote unquote, hate? Mm-hmm. And then listen to like, diff, not like the most popular at that time, right? but like, the essentials uh-huh. and go back and be like, why is this, this, and this, this? Yeah. Because I think if you listen to what's popular now in a genre, you're not going to get the, the, the best. Right. You're just going to get like flavor of the week. Uh-huh. So by American high five. Yes. We should bring that song. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> That's a good song. It's pretty, it's catchy. That's a good band. Sure. I mean, a, a novel. Actually, band, I, but... had a, I had a weird thought for, uh, uh, theme yeah. that, that that reminded me of. Yeah, do you want me to say it or do you want me to? Sure, go for it. it. So the thought was, and I and I have a specific band and song in mind for this, but the thought for the theme was one hit wonder, but like a personal one hit wonder. Meaning, 
you're like, oh yeah, that band, I like that band. But what you really like is that one song by that band. I gotcha. And you've never re- you yourself have never really listened to more than just that one song. Uh-huh. Or you kind of have, but you just stick with that one song. So like your own personal one hit wonder. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. I understand that. Okay. I, so I maybe we'll do that at some point. If you have one, you'd have to think about it. Uh, yeah, I would. Um, by the way, American Hi-Fi is still a band. Of course. They never broke up. Uh-huh. Uh, one person left the band for a couple of years and then came back. Uh-huh. Um, I'm popping bubble wrap. Yeah, I see that. Um, Before I, we go, I'm going to pop all of it. I saw them in 2001 oh. at Kent State, where I also saw Jurassic 5. Nice. And Our Lady Peace. Uh-huh. And a bunch of other bands for free yeah. because they were just like, we're having a concert here today. And I didn't even know about it until that <laughs> day. And I'm like, really? They're going to, I'm, I'm going to go to see a free concert today. Yeah. Awesome. Of bands that I actually like. Cool. Um, and then I was, I, I, I texted a friend. I'm wondering, did I, did I actually text or did I call them? You or did I email them? a message them? on I am. It, yes, yes, it probably was that. And I'm like, hey, there's a free concert here. If you can get here, <laughs> you can go see this band for free. Yeah. And they were at West Westminster. Uh-huh. Um, so not that far away, but like far. Yeah. Like an hour. Uh-huh. But it's like an hour for a free show. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll go see Our Lady Peace for free. Um, so, yeah. Sweet. Anyways. People should check us out on the socials. Yeah. Instagram. At Two Tunes Podcast. Uh, Facebook. Two I, Tunes Podcast. I, I, I don't really know how to find. Just look Just, up Two Tunes Podcast. Yeah. If you see our logo, give us a like. Or give us a like. Join um, the Discord. Definitely join the Discord. I'll post pictures of those records. I found out that there's a Nine Inch Nails Discord. Of course there is. Yeah, and there's a Discord for everything. There is. You can go down a rabbit hole with all your friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, go so over there. Send us an that. email. Send us questions. I want to answer some more questions. Yes. Contact us in any way for anything. Tell us what you want to hear. And do you want to hear more bubble wrap? Do you want to hear bubble wrap? Okay. We'll see you next week. Bye.